All right. Hello, everyone. Today is Friday, December 22nd, 2023. The Lord wants me to do a teaching. Um, so let's open in prayer. You can go ahead and get your Bibles out. In the description box below, I am going to type out the notes and the scripture. So if you want to open up the description box and follow along with that, you can do that. Um, and, you know, if you want to get out your Bible and take notes or highlight or whatever. Um, the title of this, I, I believe what the Lord wants me to title this, is Infiltration of the Church. This is pertaining to pagan holidays, etc. Uh, this is actually from a recent rebuke that the Lord had me um, give to a local beast system quote-unquote, ministry. This is just one part of it. Um, and he had me go ahead and get the scriptures ready to go along with it, because in the actual review, he didn't have me put scripture because that's their responsibility. Um, but let me open in prayer. Father God, Yahweh, once again, I just ask in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything that is not true, anything you don't want me to say, anything you, that's not coming from you, anything how you don't want me to say, I ask you, Yeshua, will you please breathe into me afresh, overflowing your Holy Spirit and your peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, moods, and circumstances. I ask you, Holy Spirit, will you please give me the right articulation, the right words to say, the right way at the right time, the right phrasing. Um, if there's any more scripture you want me to reference, will you please bring that to my mind? Um, I just ask for your presence, Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will your, will your words please be put into my mouth? I ask for your words to be, to be in my mouth and coming out of my mouth. I ask for uh, revelation for myself and everyone listening and watching. I ask for revelation and conviction, as always, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Will you please come here, Lord, and speak through me to the edification of people. Amen. I ask for all this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. <clears throat> all right, so... This would be easier to do if I could share my screen, but I don't have that software yet, so we're going to make do for now. So, so, like I said, so this came from a, a rebuke that, that the Lord had me type up and deliver, like hand deliver, um, but he, he, he had me do it very sneakily. <laughs> um, nonetheless, anyway, so I have... Some of this typed up, and then I wrote out the, uh, the scripture. So that's what I'm, if you see me looking like over here, that's what I'm looking at. So the title for this teaching, this video, is Infiltration of the Church. And underneath that title, there are three sub bullet points, and underneath, underneath each of those, um, there is biblical truth, and then there is scripture to go along with that. So, Infiltration of the Church is the title. The first bullet point to kind of like unpack this, um, to elaborate, to, I think some people say tease this out. Um, first bullet point is propagating wicked holidays. Propagating wicked holidays, such as Christmas, Halloween, um, even Valentine's Day and, and so forth. Okay, and I do not claim to be an expert on all this. The Lord has not led me to get all that deep into it, okay? But uh, I'm pretty sure just about all of the holidays that we celebrate here in the USA, and some of them are also in other countries, you know, I, again, Christmas, um, Halloween are the two, like, really big ones. Then you've got, like, Valentine's Day. I'm pretty sure St. Patrick's Day is probably pagan. Like, so again, I'm not, I don't claim to be an expert. All I know is... If God tells me to leave something alone, I leave it alone, or I, I, I try to. Some things I have no problem, some things are more tempting, but the holidays, the pagan holidays, I have no problem leaving them alone. Um, so, bullet point number one, propagating wicked holidays. The biblical scripture that the Lord had me put here is, the church is to abstain from ungodly 
diversions. And if you look up the word diversion, what it means is to cause someone or something to get off of course, to get off their path that God has for them, that God has ordained and determined for them. Tigress. Shh, quiet. <laughs> My cat's running around. Sorry. Okay. Um, so the scripture, he gave me three scriptures for this. So we're going to start off in the book of Jude, which is one chapter. So Jude 1, um, starting in verse 14 through 19. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Are we ending? Verse 19, continuing on. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the Spirit. Capital S, Spirit, Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, you know, Jude is the second to last book in the canon. It's right before the book of Revelation. Okay, it says, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Okay, I do believe that this is referring to the two witnesses. That's a whole other discussion. But this is talking about how in the last days, okay, um, you know, there will be mockers, etc. Ungodly people doing ungodly things, okay? So that's just one scripture that God told me to accompany with this. Okay, so again, the title of this is Infiltration of the Church. The first bullet point we're covering is Propagating Wicked Holidays. The biblical truth is the church is to abstain. That means stay away from, don't participate in, abstain from ungodly diversions. And I guess, uh, and, and, and this is the scripture God gave me and in the order he, he gave it to me. So he's making it clear that there are ungodly people, there are ungodly behaviors, and they will be judged by the Lord. They will be dealt with, and we are, we are to have nothing to do with ungodly things or ungodly people. And there's other verses that come to mind. I think it's in Ephesians, it talks about that. It says, um, do not join with them, do not, do not partner with them, do not par participate with them. I think it's in Ephesians chapter 5, give or take, 4 or 5. Okay, so the next scripture God gave me for this is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 through 4. make sure I've got this right. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 through 4. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, yes, excuse me, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Verse 5, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. Wait a minute. I'm going on farther. Was, so verse 2 through 4 is what he was particularly having me read. Um, so again, infiltration of the church, propagating wicked holidays. The people who claim to be Christian, but they're really not walking with the Holy Spirit. Um, they're not abiding in Christ. They really haven't been conveyed into the kingdom yet. Um, they are the ones that this is referring to that there is a veil over their eyes, and so they are still living in the world. They're still living ungodly, worldly, participating in propagating wicked holidays, okay? 
Uh, the next passage the Lord gave me is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 22, abstain from every form of evil, and some translations say appearance of evil. There's a lot of uh, perspectives, perceptions, layers to things out there. You know, I know a lot of us, including myself, you know, when I was growing up, we celebrated Christmas, we celebrated all these pagan holidays. And, you know, we preached, you know, keep Christ in Christmas, you know. Christ was born September 11th. He wasn't even born in the month of December, okay? And if you, if that's news to you, go do your research. Ask Holy Spirit to lead you. Ask Holy Spirit to confirm it to you, okay? Um, again, I'm not an expert on all this stuff. I don't, I kind of tend to retain things in terms of just, concepts. I don't remember details unless Holy Spirit really tells me to. Um, all I know is that they have mixed all these pagan holidays in and then called, and then called it, you know, Christian supposedly. Okay. So those are the three scriptures he gave me to go along with the biblical truth that the church is to abstain from ungodly diversions. And that is, um, addressing the sin of propagating wicked holidays. So that was point number one as to how the church is being infiltrated. Point number two, celebrating desecration of the Lord's feasts. Celebrating desecration of the Lord's feasts. The biblical truth to accompany this is the disciples of Christ are to be set apart from the world. Now, of course, we all know the passages that say where God says, be holy for I am holy and all that. He didn't tell me to cite that specifically. What he did tell me to cite here is Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. And that is all the Lord gave me for this point. So this is point number two, celebrating desecration, okay? So you've got consecration, where you consecrate yourself, where you set yourself apart, you make yourself holy, okay? Holy means to be set apart. And then you've got the opposite of that, of desecrate, which means to do the opposite, where you are partnering with evil, okay? Where you are um, taking something that actually is holy and set apart and you're desecrating it, you are making it now ungodly, you're, you're tainting it, you are ruining it, okay? That's like taking um, a bucket of, like, white paint and dropping some black in there, you know? Um, there's lots of different analogies I could give, I, I think that's sufficient. Third point, advocating for communion with witchcraft. The biblical truth that the Lord gave me for this is Satan has nothing in common with love. Now we know that the scripture tells us that God is love. And we, and, and just recently on the channel, I've, I kind of brushed on all these different scriptures, you know, where it says, you know, um, you can move mountains and prophesy and this, that, and the other, right? You can have faith and da-da-da-da. But if you don't have love, you are nothing. You have nothing. And then there's the other scripture that says, you know, there's uh, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is, is, is love, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we, if you know scripture, if you know God's word, you know that his is a kingdom of love, right? Christianity is about love. So the title here is Infiltration of the Church. We're on point number three advocating for communion with witchcraft okay these um a lot of the these pagan holidays have witchcraft involved depending to some extent etc okay the truth is satan has nothing in common with love what does satan mean satan means means adversary okay now god gave me three passages to go along with this the first is from the book of zephaniah in the Old Testament, 
Zephaniah chapter 3, starting in verse 3, ending in verse 7. Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. And this is that that sentence right there that that stands out quite a bit or that part of that sentence. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. How many of these churches, how many of these quote unquote ministries are propagating the wicked holidays, are desecrating the Lord's feasts, and therefore advocating for communion with witchcraft. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law, right? Yeshua said, I came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it, right? They have done violence to the law. The Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails, but the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instruction so that her dwelling would not be cut off despite everything for which I punished her. But they rose early and corrupted all their deeds. When I read passages like this, I can really emphasize, empathize with the Lord it seems sometimes that even though he knows everything and he knows what's going to happen ahead of time, it seems that the Lord still goes like in his own heart. It's like how we can have like a disconnect in a sense between like our intellect and our heart, right? Like we can know something intellectually, but our heart can have a hard time accepting it. Sometimes it really seems to me like God goes through the same thing, you know, like he knows ahead of time what's going to happen, but he still is emotionally upset about things, you know. Um, so that was Zephaniah chapter three, verse three through seven. The point that we're on right now is advocating for communion with witchcraft. Satan has nothing in common with love. What I hear Holy Spirit saying right now is these priests, these supposed shepherds, these supposed leaders who are polluting the sanctuary and doing violence to, to the law and corrupting all their deeds, they are part of Satan. Satan means adversary. And the church, the body of Christ, really needs to recognize who not just are the false shepherds, but who are the false sheep? Who are wolves in sheep's clothing? Who are wolves? Well, I'm just going to leave that at that. Okay. So the next verse the Lord gave me is from the book of 1 John. First John chapter 4. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. You know, the second sentence of that verse, I think is hard for a lot of people to really grasp what that means. And I don't, I'll be honest, I don't feel like I completely 100% grasp it just yet, but I think I feel like I'm getting a better comprehension of, of what that means. It means if you've been truly conveyed into the kingdom because you have not just received Christ as your savior, but you have actually diligently done your best to forgive everything you need to forgive, to repent of everything you need to repent of, and pursued deliverance to the best of your ability, you tend to not be as fearful as you used to be. That's the like natural organic byproduct. And that's what this is referring to. But let's just go, just let's read 
center here. So again, the topic of this video is infiltration of the church. We are on point number three, advocating for communion with witchcraft. That is the sin that God is addressing. The biblical truth is Satan, adversary, has nothing in common with love. So again, 1 John 4.18, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Satan has nothing in common with love. Conforming to the ways of the world is what I'm hearing right now. Infiltration of the church. Lord, do you want me to get into that whole topic? Okay, what, what Holy Spirit is bringing to my mind right now is, you know, in 2020, right? We all know what happened worldwide. And you had, quote-unquote, ministries, quote-unquote, churches, quote-unquote, pastors, quote-unquote, ministers, quote-unquote, officers, priesthood, advocating for propagating the worldwide rituals of witchcraft that were being implemented, enforced, like, you know, wearing something across your mouth, your face, etc., taking the mark of the you-know-what, okay? And that was all driven by what? By fear. That is how Satan adversary operates through fear and torment. The last scripture the Lord gave me is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? So again, the title of this is Infiltration of the Church, point number three, advocating for communion with witchcraft. Satan has nothing in common with love. In other words, Satan, adversary, enemy, has nothing in common with the kingdom of God. Satan has nothing in common with Christianity. True, pure Christianity. How the Lord has designed it to be what it's supposed to be, which is intimate relationship with Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? This is a fundamental truth. Can you have darkness where there is light? No. What I'm hearing Holy Spirit remind me of right now is back in Genesis, it says the Lord separated light from darkness. But yet, here in these last days, as it said in Zephaniah, we have these false shepherds, wolves in sheep's clothing. I feel like, let's go back to that who are trying to mix, they're, they're infiltrating the church. They are bringing Satan into the church. Zephaniah. My goodness, that's Zechariah, that's not Zephaniah. There it is. Zephaniah. I mean, let's, let's circle back to that. Her princes in, in her midst are roaring lions. What? <laughs> what does scripture say about Satan? 
He roar he prowls around like a roaring lion. Okay? Her judges are evening wolves, wolves in sheep's clothing. Her prophets are insolent. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. So what the Lord is drawing his attention to is you need to discern. Yes, Lord. What I hear Holy Spirit directing me to right now is Malachi. You need to discern, which means you receive, communicate, you seek and you receive communication from Holy Spirit. Where, where is it, Lord? Malachi chapter 3. Verse 18, then you shall discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. You need to discern. You need to pursue revelation, discernment from Holy Spirit, so that you can judge between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and one who does not serve him. You need to be able to discern what is the true body of Christ from the infiltrated church. You need to discern who is in the inner court and still messing around with the world and being ungodly from who is the true bride of Christ, who is the true body of Christ. Excuse me, let me correct myself body of Christ, okay? Who's been conveyed into the kingdom and who hasn't? Who is really abiding in Christ? Who is remaining in Christ, okay? The Lord brought someone across my path today that kind of was emphasizing remaining. But in order to remain, you have to get there in the first place. You have to be conveyed into the kingdom in the first place. You have to repent of your sins. You have to give up your idols. Forfeit your idols. Repent of your sins. Forgive. Pursue deliverance. So these are the three charges, at least three anyway, that God is bringing against the church. Okay? Judgment starts in the house of the Lord. infiltration of the church. The Lord is angry. He is not happy about how the church has been infiltrated. And he's upset about how people are not seeking discernment. They're not consecrating themselves. They're not asking Holy Spirit. And these are the three sins, the three crimes. Number one, propagating the... Uh, excuse me, propagating wicked holidays. Number two, celebrating desecration of the Lord's feasts. How many people who call themselves Christians, who have Yeshua's name on their lips, are celebrating all these pagan holidays, these pagan festivals, instead of the Lord's feasts? We've all, I think, just about, I think we've all just about been guilty of that. In the past. But where are we now? Where are you now? Number three. Advocating for communion with witchcraft. I couldn't believe in 2020, in 2021, people who had such large followings. Whether it was a brick and mortar church ministry or whether it was even people on YouTube who had large followings, they were telling people to, partic to participate in these rituals, telling people to wear you-know-what on their face, to take you-know-what up their nose, to take you-know-what in their arm. Defiling the temple of the Holy Spirit. Scripture flat out tells us, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And it flat out tells us, if you defile the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will destroy you. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what it says. Advocating for communion with witchcraft. You need to seek the Lord for the truth. And then if you hear other people, I don't care how famous they are, 
how prolific their quote unquote following or quote unquote ministry is. I don't care how big, if it's a mega church, I don't care if they've got a million bazillion subscribers on YouTube. I don't care if they're telling you something that goes against what Holy Spirit has told you and revealed to you and confirmed to you. And especially if it goes against the word of God. That person is not in alignment with the truth. Yeshua said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. Remain in me. Abide in me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your words. Thank you, God. He said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. Remain in me. Abide in me. That means you remain and you abide in the truth. How do you know what the truth is? You test everything and hold fast to what is good. How do you know what's good? You ask him. You fast and you pray. You open up your Bible and you say, Lord, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, Father God, Yahweh, will you please speak to me? Will you please give me revelation? I don't want to hear from anybody else. I don't want to listen to myself. I want to hear from you, God. That's what you do as a Christian. Malachi 3, chapter 18. Then you shall discern. Discern is when you receive communication from Holy Spirit. You receive revelation from Holy Spirit. Then you shall discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. You need to discern who is the, the true body of Christ, who's been conveyed into the kingdom, who is living holy, who is set apart, who is remaining and abiding in Christ, from who is the infiltrated church, the, the infiltrated quote-unquote church, Okay. Who is in the inner court, hasn't been conveyed into the kingdom, is still living worldly and ungodly and conforming to the ways of the world from who is the body of Christ? Who's been conveyed into the kingdom? Who is setting themselves apart, consecrating themselves? And first, you have to consecrate yourself. You have to make sure that you are working out your salvation, that you are consecrating yourself so that you get conveyed into the kingdom, so that you are abiding in Christ and remaining in Christ. So that's step number one. Where are you at? Because here's the problem. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Here's the problem. There's too many people, the Church of Laodicea especially, who are attempting to do all this judging, and they themselves have not worked out their own salvation yet. And they're going around condemning God's people, God's anointed, God's priesthood. And on Judgment Day, they're going to be held accountable for every idle word. What I hear Holy Spirit saying right now is that passage from what Isaiah, where God says, I will contend with those who contend with you. And it also says that those who truly are in right standing with the Lord, they will be the ones who actually judge and condemn these other fools who are running their mouths, running their fingers on the internet, when they themselves have not even consecrated themselves. They're not even conveyed into the kingdom. If they died right now, they'd be going to the lake of fire. They're too busy running their mouths, being led by intellect. They have no real heart, intimate relationship with the Lord. So step number one, where are you at? But number two, if you have gotten to that point where you have done... <laughs> To the best of your ability, you have forgiven everything that you can possibly forgive. You have, you have diligently done that. You have repented of everything you can think of. And you have pursued deliverance with all of your heart. It says in scripture, seek me with all of your heart and you will find me. Call out to me and I will, I will reveal to you unsearchable things. Then, and only then... Can you be in a position to start discerning and judging who's wicked and who's not? But first, you got to look in the mirror. Take the plank out of your own eye. Are you wicked? And I'm not talking about how we're all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God, okay? Take what I'm saying in context, okay? I'm talking about have you consecrated yourself or not? Because if you haven't, then who are you to be able to judge and discern? Who are you to be able to know who has and hasn't consecrated themselves when you yourself haven't gone through the process? Needless to say, 
If you are celebrating these pagan holidays, if you are propagating them, advocating for them, participating in them, repent now. But there's all, there's other things, not just the pagan holidays, okay? There's things that have been going on even just in the last couple of years. The Mark of the Beast has rolled out. There's been worldwide rituals that were going on of wearing things on your face, etc., etc. That was all witchcraft. By the way, it was, okay? Those are all worldwide rituals that they got people to participate in, driven by fear. Holy Spirit, Yeshua, Yahweh. Is there anything else, Lord, that you want me to cover? Have I gone over everything? I believe that's everything. If there's anything else the Lord wants me to include, I will put it in the description box below. So again, I will type out these notes and the scripture in the description box below for your reference. If you have any curious genuinely curious questions, you're welcome to reach out in the comments or shoot me an email. I will put my email address in the description box below for you. It's always on my about page, which is more difficult to access now. Um, and I think that's that. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.